Well, voting is underway to select the next president of the Eurogroup, the body comprised of 19 Eurozone finance ministers. Three candidates are vying to replace Portugal's Mario Centino, Spain's Nadia Calvino, Ireland's Pascal Donoghue, and Luxembourg's Pierre Gramega. The winning candidate needs to garner a simple majority of 10 votes. Well, for more on this, let's cross over to our correspondent in Brussels, that's Shona Murray, and she's at the bridge, our studio at the heart of the European Parliament. Shona, good to see you there. Well, tell us who's uh, the favourite to win this vote tonight. Well, we know, Tokes, that uh, Nadia Calvino, the Spanish finance minister, of course, is the front runner. But what we can tell you right now is that the first round of voting has taken place and there was no evident winner. The first person to get 10 votes out of the 19 would be the apparent winner. But that hasn't happened. So now they will go into a second round of voting. Now, what I can tell you is I've heard from sources that Pierre Gramega is the one who will come out of the competition and that the second round will include uh, Nadia Calvino and Ireland. Pascal Donoghue. Uh, so anyway, I'm joined uh, by Spanish MEP Garcia Mangano from Parti Popular. Um, so tell us, you are obviously Spanish, so you'll be hoping that uh, Nadia Calvino gets the role. Why would she be the best person for this job? Even though the Irish candidate is, uh, comes from a political family, so I have a conflict. But in this case, I am backing my compatriot, Nadia Calvino. But I think uh, she is very competent. She knows very well European institutions. I met her for the first time when she was director general for, for the budget and I think is the only break we have, the only hope we have to stop Sanchez and, uh, and the Podemos party. So those are the three reasons why I am backing uh, Nadia Calviño. She's competent, she does very well Europe and she's a Spaniard. Well we'll have to see, we'll have to see what, what's going to happen there but what lies ahead for the president of the Eurogroup? Well, I think uh, the new president of the Eurogroup will have to face one of the more difficult conflicts we have ever known. I was the vice president of the Commission, the, econo the Commission on Economic and Monetary Affairs, when the financial crisis broke down, and I think this crisis is even worse. In fact. I believe that this is the worst crisis, the, the worst encounters had lived since 1929. So the task of the Eurogroup will be huge, huge and difficult one, because as you know, there are some differences between member countries. Do you think it will be possible for whoever it is, President of the Eurogroup, to build that consensus, given the sort of acrimony that exists between the member states when it comes to the EU Rescue Fund and essentially the, the future of Europe and the Euro? Well, she has to. I mean, we have no choice. I think that the, she has to, to reach an agreement, and he has to reach an agreement now, in July or in July, because, I mean, the crisis is huge. The, the economic outlook is not bright at all, and there are a lot of people who are suffering a lot. Mm. There are of sort of companies who are in the brick to, to close down, a lot, a lot of workers who are very worried about the, 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 the jobs and uh, I think, uh, I mean, we, can, we, we cannot afford not to reach an agreement. Do you think that it will be possible to rebuild confidence in the euro as a currency? I don't mean on the markets, but I mean for other member states to actually want to join it. Well, I think that's the case. I think all of them are willing to, to, are willing to, to, to join the euro. I mean, if you look what has happened until now, I mean, the European Central Bank, which is the bank of the euro, in fact, has been very fast and very strong. I mean, he has put on the table more than one billion euros just to cope with this problem. If we see what is going on in all the other institutions, we have seen the European Investment Bank, you, you have seen the uh, European Stability Mechanism, which will put on the table something like, I remember, 240,000 two, million. And uh, this year, the Commission, 100,000 euros just to help the workers who have lost their job, are looking for a job, or, or they see the, the job in danger. So I think to be in the euro now 
is more attacked there than, than ever. It was not the case a month ago, there was doubt, but now that the reaction has been so fast and so strong, there is no doubt for me that everybody will go into... Uh, when, will, you talk, when you talk to your colleagues here in the Parliament, do you feel like there is a desire or a willingness or that it will eventually be a consensus around mm -hmm. this EU rescue fund? Because mm -hmm. again, we're still hearing from, exam for example, the Netherlands that they really are quite opposed to the size of the fund, not the grant one, level. No. Right. Not only the Netherlands, of course, yeah, Austria and others. Yeah, but you know, until now, we have reached an agreement in some very, very key questions. We have almost reached an agreement on the amount, 750,000 million. We have reached an agreement that this fund will be uh, financed by uh, an European bond, backed by the European budget, which is completely new. We have heard that, uh, we have agreed that to repay this debt, we will issue new resources, new taxes. That's a big step in the, in the way to this European states, uh, the states, United States of Europe. And we have seen a, a huge reaction on the, on the Commission to, to, to allow the countries to spend more than it was previously accorded in the, in the so stability pact. the rules, essentially. Yes, yes. Well, that, that's new. I mean, if you, you are talking about the Netherlands who are mad about the austerity and they were mad in the, in so the previous crisis. progress is possible. We've come a long way, we essentially. We have already done yeah. a progress. Okay. We have already done a progress. And now I hope that we will agree that the, this, uh, the money that will go to the member state will go in the form of grants and not in the forms of loans, because, I mean, if we increase the debts of many countries, that will, we are going to face a, a financial crisis, a debt crisis like we, we, that we did uh, eight years ago. So let's see what will happen. We'll know in the next few minutes. But Garcia Margallo from the Parti Popular in Spain, thank you very much for joining us. And back to you in the studio. Tokes. Jonah, thank you for that.